Hi everyone, today I'm going to be teaching you how to use the OWL Meeting Pro with Google Meets for teaching remote learners in your classroom. First off, let's talk about what is the OWL Meeting Pro. This unit is everything that you need to increase your camera, sound, input and audio um, output for in your classroom. So in terms of looking at the unit on the bottom, there is a tripod mount and we'll talk about that in a moment. And then there's also, if you look in there, there is a micro USB and then a power port. Then looking at the actual unit itself, this gray portion that you see here with the fabric on it is a speaker as well as a wide array microphone. So that way it will pick up better audio from other students and from yourself in your classroom, which is really what we're seeing as being the crucial piece to improve success for our remote learners. Then, um, on the top of the unit is this uh, camera, which actually provides a 360 degree or actually more like a 180 degree view of your classroom. Um, so that way you don't have to worry about where your camera is pointing. Then the other two pieces that you have in your box are a power brick and a USB cord. And so you do have to be tethered for uh, this unit in order to work properly with your computer. It won't work otherwise, so um, sorry about that. But basically, you're going to find an outlet for your unit to plug into. Okay, and so once we've plugged it in, then we can take the power port, uh, the power cord, and plug it in. Okay, so then the unit itself is powered and if you look at it, it has the little eyeballs there showing that it's booting up. And you might hear it hoot because it's an owl. And then the other piece that we need is our USB cord. And there's the hoot. So that tells us that it's all booted. So the other piece that we need is the USB cord. It is a micro USB, so like your old school cell phones. That goes into your owl, into the power port or into the USB port next to the power port. And then the other piece is a standard USB, just like that. And that you're going to plug in to the side of your computer. And then the last piece um, for teachers at MACD6, we are also supplying uh, teachers with a tripod. And so to use the tripods that you guys are receiving, basically you wind up um, opening up the side here in order to release the quick mount and then the quick mount screws into the bottom of the owl like such and then you can set up your tripod using the quick releases The tripod is optional, but it does allow you to put your owl on a stable surface anywhere around your room and not have it take up a student's desk, which is really helpful. Um, so it's up to you as to where you choose to put it. It also might make it easier for you to put it near one of those beloved outlets um, that you have around your classroom. So let's stick this up. And then using the tripod um, pistol grip itself, there's a knob on the, the grip, and so the knob that you see here is what you use to tighten or loosen um, the, uh, the tripod head itself. And so once you've tightened it so it's flat, then you can snap the, um, the plate in place so that way your owl is at the level that you want it to be. In this case, it might be a little bit high. I might choose to put it more... Um, down at student level, and so I can adjust that. Okay, and this is something that you'll just sort of play with and, and figure out where it's going to be best for you. Okay, and so that's how you set up your meeting, uh, your OWL Meeting Pro. Now let's look at how to actually use it with our Google Meet. So on my computer, I do have a Google Meet open. And I have not joined the meeting itself, um, but this is the pre-join meeting or the pre-join area. 
And um, so once I plugged in the owl, it was automatically detected by my system. So that way I can um, use the owl with meeting uh, with Google Meets. Notice that I did not have to install any software in order to have it work. Um, there is an additional piece of software that you can use for your iPad. And I'll go over that after we cover the basics. So I'm going to join my meeting. And it works just like a normal Google Meet, except now you see a slightly different view. And so what the owl does, assuming that I don't knock it over, is provides the students with a 360 degree view across the top. So that way um, they can see all around the room. It would be similar to as if they were actually a student in the room and able to look around and see if there are people coming in. So it gives more of a real life perspective for those remote learners. And then what you see on the bottom is that the OWL internally within its unit has software built in that is used to detect voices and then reframe that bottom view so that way you see who's actually speaking. And if there was someone else in this room with me, you could actually see two different windows at the same time if there were two different speakers. So if I were to move, um, what I do like about this unit as opposed to something like the swivel or another unit that moves is that this one is stationary. Um, it sits in one place. It's not distracting. Uh, maybe the lights, maybe the owl eyes are, but it at least tells you that it's on. Um, so that's pretty much all that you have to do is just set it up and then you can walk around the room and not even think about it and it will pick up on you and reframe um, your video view to what the students need to see. The other piece that I'll point out on here, since we do have it opened up, um, is that because this is a speaker, there are also volume buttons on it. Um, and so if we look at the other side, I'll spin my little, call it Hedwig for obvious reasons, but I'll spin Hedwig around. Um, there are audio uh, volume control buttons on the side, so you can turn up or down the volume depending on what you need. And um, then on two of the sides are a button to turn off your microphone. So if I press the button, you see on the screen that the remote microphone is muted, um, being the owl. And if I press the button again, then it, the microphone is back on. Um, so what you want to do to keep track of that is that if you're having a private conversation with a student or you don't need um, your remote learners to be hearing a discussion, then you can use the, the mute option. The owl itself is still listening because it does still track. So if I were to move around the room, it does still um, usually reframe to be uh, following the viewer or following the speaker. Um, but the it does mean that that audio from your owl is not transmitted to your remote learners. So that's how you use the owl. Um, if you need to change your microphone and everything over to the owl, on Google Meets, you can do that using the three dots and then clicking on settings. And then you can change your microphone to be the Meeting Owl Pro. The internal speakers are the micro, uh, the yeah, internal speakers to be the Meeting Owl Pro. And then you also need to change your video to be the Meeting Owl Pro. Um, another piece that you might need to, to switch off is the noise cancellation. Sometimes if a student's voice is too quiet, it might see it as background noise. So if you're having problems with students' voices being picked up by those remote um, learners, then you might need to turn this off. Otherwise, you can turn it on and it will help filter out any speech that Google thinks might not be actual speech. So things like your HVAC unit or anything like that. Um, and then we have obviously our camera settings. And so that's pretty much all that you have for controls on your actual Google Meet for how to use the Meeting All Pro. And now we're going to take a bit of a break and I'm going to actually show you how to use the uh, app on your iPad or other personal device in order to control what your camera actually sees. <clears throat> so now that we have our OWL set up and we know how to use it with our computer, the other piece that you might want to use is the um, software in order to control your OWL. So it is Meeting OWL 
and once you download it, you can pair it with your owl. So in this case, I only have one nearby owl because it's the only one in the district right now. And so I have my nearby owl. I'm going to tap on it to connect to it. And then within here, I have a couple different options and we're only really concerned at this point about the top one. So we're gonna look at camera controls and by default, the 360 degree pano at the top of the, the meeting that you saw is turned on. Um, and if I were to switch back over to show myself on the computer, um, then it's this top image here. So with the app, I can actually turn that off. So if your users find it distracting, you can do that or you can turn it on. And then the other piece that you can do, see both, there we go. So now we can see both of them. Um, so the other option that we have in the app is to do camera lock and zoom. And so that lets you take control. So this would be useful if, for example, you were using your owl in a classroom with a whiteboard on it. Um, you could control where you're going to look by dragging the little mini screen icon to wherever you'd like it to be. So let's pretend that that door over there is my whiteboard. So we can drag it. That will um, sort of indicate where we want it to frame it. And then we can also change our zoom along the bottom to actually zoom in on the screen. Um, so that way it's a little bit clearer. And once I'm done with the lecture portion of my class, or once we're done utilizing the whiteboard, then I can say reset to autofocus when we're going back to our discussion time. And it will flip back and open up as you see on the right hand side to show um, everything that's going on in the room. And again, I can bring back on the 360 pano if I want, and it's just an easy flip and it brings it back. So that's how you use the Meeting Owl Pro and how you use the app. If you have any questions about the technical side of it, feel free to talk to your tech coach um, or drop me a message. And then let's also work with our instructional coaches to make sure that we're leveraging the technology um, to improve our instruction in the classroom as well. And that's a really good pairing between your tech coach and your instructional coach. Um, so be sure to utilize both of those as we move through this transition for our kids. I hope this helps. Have a great day.